Welcome to Cake 101. Um, so what I wanted to do today was kind of show you guys everything that you've seen on like Pinterest and Instagram and whatever, and you can see it live. Hopefully you'll have some takeaways um, in terms of like technique if you like to do cakes at home. So um, we're pretty ambitious. We're gonna, uh, I'm trying to get three different ones done. We're gonna go unicorn, we're gonna do an ombre cake, and uh, hopefully if there's time in the end, we'll do one of those uh, mirror glazed galaxy type situations. So um, I m made all of these cake layers two days ago at La Quinta High School. Um, so you can see like these are just eight inch cake layers. You can use cake mix, there is no shame in that. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I'd use cake mix and then make your own frosting and call it a day and no one will know. Um, so, and then the, uh, the buttercream that I'm using uh, this whole time, it's a uh, Swiss meringue. So it's uh, one part egg whites, two parts sugar, and three parts butter. So uh, let's say four ounces of egg whites, eight ounces of sugar, and a pound of butter. Um, ooh. Uh, but if you prefer the American style, like powdered sugar situation, by all means, do that. I just like this. I think it tastes better. It's a little more buttery. Sounds like a jet is taking off. All right. So first, we're going. This is going to be our unicorn. So I just want to get these uh, layers done. And you can see I just kind of. By the way, these turntables are great. Don't get the plastic ones. These metal ones, they're like battleships. They will last forever as long as you don't get them wet because um, there's a little spindle in there. And once that starts rusting, it's done. But these cost like 50 bucks. The plastic ones cost 40. Spend the extra 10 bucks. It's worth it. Um, so you can see, if you want to check like your level of the buttercream, by the way, so your levels are even, you can use a skewer or a, or a paring knife to see. You can see just like how high it went, or you can do that <laughs> and that. <laughs> Maybe not if you're selling them professionally. <laughs> um, and then you'll see like when I, as I level the cakes, this one I'm not even trimming. So you'll notice the first one I trimmed because it domed up. But when I baked these, I always like to work from cold cake layers. When I baked them, before I put them in the fridge, I wrapped them individually and stacked them on top of each other. So the weight of the cakes took care of itself as it sat in the fridge overnight. It's so much easier to assemble a cold cake. So even if you make it and throw it in the freezer for an hour, great. Um, so again, and this, this is a little bit more of a cake to the cake to frosting ratio than I like but I wanted to get it nice and high and also do it fairly quickly. Um, so you'll also notice that I'm doing a lot of this and it's not because it's leg day, it's because I wanna get, never skip leg day, all right? Um, it's because when you're at eye level with the cake, you can really see what's going on, all right? If you're looking down on it, you can kind of go either way. So I like to get at eye level, I like to be friends with my cake. And then same thing here. Um, I'm not doing what's called a crumb coat. Um, I think it's kind of a waste of time, and I'll show you why. A lot of times they'll say, like, crumb coat it now, and then you'll put this in the freezer, and then you'll have to wait for, like, half an hour and watch, like, half an episode of SVU, and then come back to it. But you don't really need to do that, so I have... I love disposable pastry bags, by the way. The, the environment and the sea turtles probably don't, but um, you know, it just makes doing this a lot easier, especially on the sides, because <laughs> you know, you'll here. This is what I hate. <laughs> right? Like goop, goop, right? Instead, you can just take the bag. Ah, oh. Ah, cake. All right, and you don't, this is not, we're not getting this perfect, we're just literally adhering it to the sides. And then, how do we get it like straight and perfect, etc., cetera, um, with a straight edge? You can use like a spackle knife if you're like into going to the Home Depot, like I am. Um, 
but you can use a ruler. Basically, anything with a straight side will make this perfectly straight. Now, the trick is, when you do this, is you can see it's kind of pyramiding here. So you want to make sure that you're at a perfect uh, right angle. <laughs> Patty, don't tell Anne Murphy, by the way. So um, uh, Patty Tom, who is actually one of my high school uh, music teachers, is here um, randomly. So yay, music. Um, but yeah, I was just messing up geometry. So hopefully she doesn't bring that back to my teachers. Um, So again, like same thing, I'm kind of, and this is what I call subtractive frosting, right? Like put more on than take it off. Which is why I always like to make more frosting than I'll use, also because um, I like to snack on it. <laughs> so I basically, if I'm like working on a cake from a cookbook or whatnot, I will uh, like double the frosting recipe. Just in case, well, because the last thing you want to do is like be cheap with the frosting, right? Or like get like halfway through this and be like, I'm out of frosting. Great, now I have to spend another 20 minutes making some frosting. Um, so just make more frosting. Like you can also freeze it. Like if you don't use it all, you can wrap it in plastic wrap and put it in the freezer. All right. So now I'm doing the top and with that, I just kind of go over the sides and then I'll go back with my friend here. And there comes a point when you're doing this that honestly, you have to cut your losses, all right? Because you will, you will stay up all night trying to get an edge. Whatever, cover it with sprinkles, okay? Like, <laughs> it's not worth your time, all right? Reclaim your cake time, guys, all right? So like, we're there, all right? This is good. This is, this is good enough, all right? This is 95%. So now, I mean, there's like a little bit here. Okay, fine, like we can like go back. Like this is why pastry chefs are obsessive, by the way, because we deal with stuff like this. <laughs> all right, so this one's done. So now I'm gonna put this into the lovely monogram Freezer. Ooh, look at that lighting. <laughs> and of course, they're so easy to get the frosting off of the glass shelves. <laughs> All right, so next up, let's make the base for the ombre cake. So I, I did that one, all right? Um, I'm lazy, so I would like a volunteer who wants to show off their frosting skills. Yeah, come on down. Come on down. All right, so ombre um, is like super, super in vogue right now. So ombre is French for, um, I don't know, <laughs> gradiated colors. Anyone see French, anyone? No, nope? okay, great, glad we had this talk. Um, <laughs> I took Spanish. Um, so this is like a bad ombre cake, I guess. Um, so what I did was, as I, when I baked my layers, sorry, unwrapping it. When I baked my layers, I took my batter and divided it into five. And I started with the darkest color, adding the food color, and I just did this by eye, there's no ratio, mix that. And then I went to the next lightest color, mix that, and then and so on and so on. So we have five layers. So what's your name? David. David. Welcome. Are you scared? Don't be scared. Uh, no, no one's eating these. If you want, there's, <laughs> there's, hand, there's hand sanitizer somewhere. Um, is this the biggest board I have? All right, we're going to do this. Part row. Ooh, so pink. All right, so for this, since we have five layers, let's do a, like a super thin uh, layer of buttercream on each one. So just, yeah. Like less, but 
<laughs> oh, let us. Yes, come. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yep, yep. Just, I like to blob. Blob and then spread. So, yeah, great. And then you can even just... This, the offset is like the best way. So like I'll, I'll like do like a one, two thing, like blob, okay. blob and spread. And again, we're going like we kind of in. <laughs> That's why they pay me the medium bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we'll do the next layer. Right. Blob, and blob and spread. I'm snacking. Yep, yep. Great. You can work from the center out, is kind of the way I do. Work and turn and work and turn. We would re ask the scene from Ghost right now, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never done that before. <laughs> cool. Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to go a little bit thinner on this. Okay. And by the way, if you, when you're doing these layers and like a little bit like comes out at the edge, that's good because you're just gonna scrape it anyway, right? Um, not so thick next time? Not so thick. Okay. I gotta get one of these, these are nice. They're, they're like 50 bucks, they're the best. Oh man. You know, the, the, the top part of the cakes are always like the super gooey part, so sometimes they stick, but that's fine. Blob and spread. Oh yeah. See, it's like riding a bike or frosting a cake or something. <laughs> nice, see? And this is where you kind of like, boop, you can kind of like push and smush and like cake is very forgiving, by the way. Unlike people, I find that cake, <laughs> cake doesn't judge, you know? <clears throat> cake doesn't lie to you, tell you they just need time for themselves. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. But this isn't about my personal betrayals. It's about cake, right? This is, uh, it's like therapy here, really, guys. Thank you for joining me in my therapy session. And later you will watch me eat my feelings. Wow, this is big. OK. All right. So we're like, we're there. All right. Now, yeah, you can, no, that's fine. Fine, totally fine. All right, so if you want to. Am I supposed to be doing this? Uh, yeah, we can, I mean, we can do the top or the sides first. It doesn't really matter. But here, we'll, do, we'll like tandem this, okay. right? So just squeeze and I'll turn. Okay. Yep. Ooh. Ah. Wee. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get it on there. Cool. Okay. All right. So now it's a little high to do like a single pass, but if you just want to hold this and turn. Oh, wow, look at that. See, like super, super oh easy. God. So we did make some cake for you. It's, uh, it's my wedding cake or what would be my wedding cake, but we're not going back into that. <laughs> um, <laughs> one day it'll be my, it's a, a Confetti cake with uh, strawberry frosting. Do I do this yeah, yeah. So again, like, just go out center to keep it level. Do do do. And then you can kind of go back in with that. And the fact that this is peeking through is totally, totally fine. Look at that. Oh my God. Yay. Wow. All right. Good job. Thank you, sir. Round of applause. Was this your first time? Was this your first time? Yes. Oh, see? I mean, 
Like, and that's the thing about pastry too. Like, I think a lot of people are like pretty scared about it because it looks super hard and technical, but it's really just like arts and crafts, right? Like, just get in the kitchen, get messy, you know, like, what's the worst that can happen? Like, it doesn't come out right and you like wasted an hour of your life, it's fine. Like, you, like, there's, <laughs> there are way worse things to be wasting your life on, all right? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, how are we doing on time? All right, so... I'm just gonna, while you guys are eating, I'm just gonna quickly get this guy done. What? Oh, 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 we haven't finished it yet. Oh yeah, don't worry. We're, we're just getting started, all right? We're just making our, our bases right now, so. Can we just whisk that frosting real quick and make sure that it's, it's ready to go? So this is gonna be for our uh, mirror glaze cake, our galaxy cake, if you will. And I'm just doing this real quick. We can just clean up the. Hmm. Fifteen left. Really? Are you sure? No. We fifteen left. Oh. All right. Well. Okay. Cool. So. Let's get unicorning. So the first one we did, here, you want to give me that frosting? So for our unicorn, right, we're going to make her his little mane going down there. Will you grab the piping bags and the star tip for me? drop one of the larger star tips in. What? Oh, oh, good. Thank 30 minutes. Whoo, I was freaking out. Okay. Glad we had this talk. Um, so for the, uh, for the main, I want to uh, do kind of like a two-tone thing with the hair. And we're going to do orange or yellow color theory, anyone? And <laughs> blue. And then you'll hopefully get like a little bit of green going on. So when I'm working with food coloring, by the way, um, which can be really messy and like get everywhere, etc., I like to use these like plastic takeout containers um, and like plastic spoons because if you've ever tried to wash, especially this gel food coloring off of anything, like it gets everywhere, it stains anything that's white and plastic, it'll stain, so, great. I'm doing really great, guys. <laughs> um, I like, so the gel food coloring, by the way, if you're into this, definitely get the gel, because uh, it's way more concentrated. You'll, if you're using the liquid, you will end up using like all of those little things, and plus it doesn't add extra water to your frosting, which if you're adding water to fat, kind of like making mayonnaise, they don't really like each other. So the more water you put into this, because there's a lot of fat, the more it could separate. I want this more yellow. That's pink, just kidding. <laughs> Again, really winning today. So, Is 
there another star tip? What? Oh, everyone's looking out for me today. I feel so loved. We're good. I got it. Yeah, we got it. Don't worry. We dropped yellow, but we got it. All right. Will you throw me uh, two more bags? All right, so disposable bag, star tip. Now they sell, Wilton sells um, these like little couplers that you can put like two different bags in or two different colors in. Um, and you can do that, you can buy those, they're like not that expensive. Um, and do we have more rubber spatulas? It'll just make my life easier. Thanks. Or you can kind of do this, which is the fast and loose way. This was the original way we did it, and then Wilton decided that they wanted to make money off of it. So you kind of do one side, right? And then do the other side. Oh. Uh -huh. And now, so we have our, our unicorn, right? And the first ones are going to come out like the first color. But then as we start going, you'll see the blue start to swirl in. And again, with these tips, by the way, like you notice I'm just kind of swirling. I think like when people start playing with piping tips, they're, they're <laughs> They're like, I must get this perfect. And honestly, it's one of those things, like, the less you think about it, the better it comes out. And especially with this, I mean, it's unicorn hair, guys. Like, it can... G <laughs> like, really? Like... All right, so you could make a horn out of fondant or make a horn out of gum paste or, you know, paint it on or whatever, or you could go onto Amazon <laughs> and buy them. <laughs> so there we go, that's your horn. Yeah, how, how you like that? We have that. Cheating. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you guys want to be here for another, like, hour? <laughs> we have eyes. Oh. 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 And then, I'm greasy. Can you open this? It's a re super good moisturizer, by the way. Face, face by buttercream. I have scissors, too. I thought I cut it off. And can you hand me the pink disco as well? So, of course, I mean, every unicorn needs some, you know, bows and barrettes in their hair. The pink disco? Um, maybe eventually. But and then, of course, this is um, this is what we call disco dust, which is a little edible glitter, which people get upset if I don't use it in demos. So 
Let's hit it with a little bit there. Oh, isn't she lovely? There we go. Unicorn, done. <laughs> Let's put this somewhere nice, all right? All right, one. God, I feel like I'm on Top Chef. All right, can we just do a little cleanup aisle five over here? Um, so let's move on to the ombre cake. And for that, I'm gonna do it kind of like spackle style. So you could, if you wanted, um, make different grades of color. Um, you know, a lighter pink, you know, working like this, like we did for the cake layers, right? Um, but the other option is you can just make one dark and kind of use that and like work your way up, right? So we're gonna go pink on the ombre cake. So I'm gonna start with like a super saturated pink color. Apparently, I like pink food coloring. It's a big bottle, and I'm almost done with it. <laughs> Don't worry, it's edible, guys. Come on. Um, so my other trick, by the way, to buttercream and you'll notice uh, in the samples that we had, is um, uh, salt and acid. So like with the, with the strawberry, I actually added a little bit of lime zest and lime juice, and I like to aggressively salt my buttercream because it, that salt cuts through the fat, right? So when we're dealing with pastry in general, I like to have a mix of sweet, salty, and acidic because just sugar is like assaulting to me. Um, so you need to temper it with, with like citrus or booze or salt or booze or booze. Is it noon yet, by the way? <laughs> I mean, it's called food and wine, all right? I see the food. I don't see that much wine. Yes, just saying. So is there a food and gin festival? Because I'd like to, I'd like to be invited to that. Can we work on that? Yeah, 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 food and gin. That is a late night party. <laughs> um, so by the way, if you guys are local and, and haven't checked it out, we're, they put us all at the Hotel Paseo, which is also a sponsor, which is across the street. Um, it's gorgeous, the rooms are amazing, but my one complaint is they haven't put the mini bars in yet. Just saying. I was like, wait, is this intentional? Did they like take it out of my room? Because they know about my peanut M&M thing at like two in the morning. All right, let's get our ombre on. There was a chunk missing somewhere. Oh well, we'll cover it up. So kind of similar to what we did as we were building it, Except what we're gonna do is, we're gonna kind of start like this. Don't worry, we're not done yet. All right? And then, so this is kind of the spackle thing, right? and then I'm using my white frosting and kind of letting it mix as it goes. And this is kind of like the Bob Ross moment, you know? <laughs> Happy little swirls. What were, what were his colors? It's like, I remember titanium white, right? Burnt sienna, uh, uh, cri uh, crimson, they're, uh, and they're, God, I love Bob Ross. So this is like really kind of free form. 
But you see, instead of like mixing all these different colors, I'm kind of just letting it do its own thing. And then if I want it darker, kind of on the bottom, you can go back there. This is where like a really tall spackle knife would be very useful. <laughs> but A hush falls over the crowd. <laughs> and then again, we talked about kind of cutting our losses, so. Right? Okay, ombre. <laughs> And then we will we'll cut into this bad boy for the grand <clears throat> grand finale. All right. Now, finally, clean up aisle five. <laughs> Time check. We were thirty minutes like thirty minutes ago. Oh, cool. Yeah, all right, so we'll have like Q&A time. <laughs> we can talk more about my life. How is what? How is it? Ombre as in O-M-B-R-E with an accent aigu. So ombre like the hair, like oh, the... Like no! <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> you know, men come in very different shapes and sizes, all right? Some men like pink, okay? So it's more like an ombre girl cake, okay? Thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, wouldn't you like to see what happens when I have like a couple drinks too? Like this is normal. Actually, I think the, yesterday before the James Beard luncheon, one of the volunteers came up and she was like, you're so smiley. I'm like, I know. She's like, what medication are you on? <laughs> and the answer is all of them. <laughs> all right, so we can get rid of our, we can get rid of that, we can get rid of that. We can take our frosting away. All right, so have you guys seen these like the galaxy cakes? Right? Like they're super cool. So, let me just take a moment, all right? <laughs> Where did that whisk go? I had a whisk, any form of whisk. Yeah, cool. And can we just get like a wipe here? Yeah. Hurricane Zach, by the way, that's um, kind of what my staff calls me, because when I come into one of the restaurants, it's like very quick, it's like a drive-by, basically, and I'm like, boom, 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 okay, bye. <laughs> and like leave like a path of destruction. Um, all right, so the, the mirror cake, right? Um, the glaze for it, I made beforehand because I wanted it to cool, and it's, 
it's gelatin, condensed milk, white chocolate, and water. Um, and it's what, it's what they use, you know, I first saw it when I was working in France, it's what they use for those little petit gâteaux, those beautiful like uh, mousse cakes, um, always beautifully colored. Um, but it's really easy to do at home. In France, we were making it with like, you know, pectin and, and glucose and all these things. And then um, a couple of years ago, someone figured out, you know, condensed milk and white chocolate works too. And you're like, oh, we've been, we've been making it way harder on ourselves this whole time. Um, so the trick to using this is the temperature, by the way. So you want it to be at about 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So you could get like your thermometer out and like stand there and stir it. Or like, what else is 90 degrees-ish? Yourself, like you are 90-ish degrees. So if you feel it and it feels warm, you're above 90. If you feel it and it feels cold, you're like below 90. But if you feel it and you can't really feel anything, you're there. Aha, aha. I just saved you $20 on a digital thermometer. You're welcome. Um, so, where do my spoons go? <laughs> so I'm gonna take my glaze, and I forgot to bring black, so this is gonna be, um, this will be like a sunset cake. Ooh, sunset. Sunset Boulevard cake. Be ready for its close up. And again, I'm using these takeout containers. I love them. And you can reuse them. But like when you order your wonton soup, you know, save it. <laughs> I mean, I clearly order a lot of wonton soup because <laughs> I don't cook at home. <laughs> it's called, it's funny, I make seamless jokes when I'm outside of New York and people look at me funny, but Grubhub, Seamless, it's like a delivery app. You go on and you don't have to call Domino's. You can just do it. Not that I eat Domino's or the Olive Garden or Panda Express at all. Not that I know that um, we're like triangulated by three Panda Express here. I certainly haven't been to at least two of them in the past three days. <laughs> Come on, guys, that orange chicken, like really. It's like, I don't know what they put in it. It's like crack and happiness <laughs> and corn syrup. Like, what else do you want? <laughs> so I, um, you know, I travel a lot, like whether we're like filming or whatever. Oh, I did bring black. Oh no, that's brown. What the hell color is this? This is not mauve. Or maybe I put the wrong top on it. Okay, cool. Well, that's why we make extra. <laughs> uh, where did my other pink go? Oh, we have more colors. Oh, yay. Um, so y when you're doing this glaze, by the way, you do want to make sure the, uh, the colors are like super saturated because you don't want to see any of the cake kind of peeking out behind it. And you want to be a little bit more cautious in making it than I was, um, because you're going to show, when you glaze it, it's like if you make a ganache cake too, you want to really make sure that thing is like straight and even, because this will show all the flaws, you know? Like with these, we can kind of put some spanks on them, right? But like that, it's just like a sheer dress where like everything's kind of hanging out. There's no, no support, if you will. <laughs> Not that I know about Spanx. Not that I had a wedding like a couple weekends ago and I was like, I can't fit into my pants. <laughs> it's cool, it's a little waist. Uh, I'll put a little blue in there too. And some dark purple, ooh. We'll keep a little bit of white. And maybe like a lighter pink. This. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and 
a little bit away. So this is pretty much at temperature, which like is shocking that I timed it right. So I actually have a little bit of time to touch this up. Now, if, you, if your cake is like super um, hard like this and coming out of the freezer, you can get a thing of hot water for your um, spatula and kind of use that to um, kind of put everything in its place. Just stealing a little bit of frosting here. want to smooth it a bit. But you want to make sure, because you're pouring this warm stuff on, that your cake is super, super cold. So I'm going to throw this back in the freezer for a second, on our, in our monogram freezer, our lovely monogram freezer. Um, and then actually, I do have something to talk about in terms of monogram, which I discovered as I was prepping for this. Now, the other way to do these, by the way, is they make these metal rings, or you can just buy metal rings that you can literally frost around, drop your cakes in, throw it in the fridge, and then torch it or, or warm water, and it comes out, and you have a perfect layer. We, I do that, I mean, we do that a lot for mass production because, you know, we don't want to sit around here, like, doing this all day. We have other things to do, like make donuts. Ooh, next year we'll do donuts, okay. All right. It'll be a bumpy galaxy, but you know what? Galaxies are bumpy. That's what Star Trek taught me. Okay, so while we wait for this for like two minutes, uh, does anyone have any questions, by the way? Like in Cake World or other? <laughs> Fine. Good question. Uh, the question was, if, you're, if you want to go black, um, uh, would you use dark chocolate instead of the white chocolate? Um, the problem with doing that is they don't necessarily make friends, because white chocolate and dark chocolate have different fat contents, and depending on which chocolates you're using. So the consistency is going to be different. So if you, if you use dark chocolate, you can only use dark chocolate, right? Whereas in the white chocolate, if you, if you want to get it dark, you can use black food coloring, and then you're able to use these. But depending on, because it's chemistry, guys, um, but depending on like the fat content, it sets differently. So you can do one or the other. Um, but, or you can split the difference and do like a milk, but you can't, because it's brown, you can't really, you can't get the vibrant colors in. Like you could do a muted galaxy, which is kind of where I want to live. <laughs> la, 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 la especially these days, and <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> um, all right. Perfect. Oh, my God. This is literally the first time I've been on time for anything. I was born two weeks early, and literally after that, I've been late for everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> do we have a big bowl or a tray or a something to catch my drip? Or if not... Whatever. Yeah, let's do this just so we don't. Do we have a smaller sheet tray? No? All right, well. That'll be fun. So there's a couple of schools of thought on, on this, by the way. Let me move this over. Ah. Oh, I almost forgot. I have more toys. Can you cut this open? Please. So the first school is that you can pour it all in one bowl. So start with the darkest color, like that. And then kind of work your way.
as opposed to doing them individually, right? That's a little scary, so we're gonna do this. And I just like to do this so I can do, see it. If you're doing this at home, you can put some plastic wrap down on like a small tray, and then you can reuse it. The problem is once you start mixing the colors, it becomes a little muddy, but you can use them for like whatever mini cakes, etc. cetera. Um, I think I want more. More is more. It's always good to kind of have more glaze than you need because you really only have like one shot to do this. So fingers crossed. Oh my, all right. All right, hope this works. <laughs> so basically, we're just going to pour. And then, so you see, like, we can kind of see her lumps. It's fine, all right? But now what you can do is kind of go back and highlight. The galaxy, ooh, galaxy. And you do, you can do a little bit of cover up if it's dripping, because it will continue to drip. And then, because it's a galaxy, so we know I love the disco dust, but normally like you have to like blow it or sprinkle it or brush it. Someone beat me to the punch with a pump dispenser because that's what I wanted to do. So this is actually this brand that I, it's called Roxy and Rich. It's, it's um, FDA approved too, because a lot of the petal dust and whatnot aren't because they're non-toxic, but they haven't got FDA approval. So they're out of Canada, but um, they have FDA approval. So all of their colors and sparkles and everything are great. This is not an ad by the way, but if any of you know them, <coughs> call me. Um, so then you want to let this kind of do its dribble thing before you clean it up. So you can put it back in the fridge, but <laughs> I can't really fit it, so we'll just leave it here. Um, so the one thing I did want to say is uh, <laughs> my frosting was still in the freezer when I, <laughs> when I got here this morning, um, and uh, everyone always asks me about like appliances and what I like and whatnot, and I love induction, especially on a cooktop, because it is super fast and super accurate, so I took my frosting, I put it in a bowl uh, on top of a pot of water, and the water boiled in 15 seconds. I kid you not. Um, and that's why I like induction. Um, gas is great, um, but I think the thing about gas, like everyone likes gas because they're like, mm, me, man, this fire, I cook food. Um, but it's not, like, it's not accurate. Um, so induction on top, electric on the oven, it's the most precise way to cook. So I'm like obsessed with this cooktop too. Um, so thanks, Monogram, for saving me, because <laughs> I was not happy when I walked in this morning. Um, all right, questions. Really? Uh, um, it's best not to, for like a lot of reasons. One, gelatin doesn't always love the freezer. Um, if you've ever tried to like freeze it, it depends on the application. But like, um, a, like a panna cotta, something with a lot of moisture and gelatin, they don't like each other. Like a mousse with gelatin, great, freeze it all day long. Um, but you'll, you'll kind of lose the sheen. So it's best to, this glaze, you can keep in the fridge, whatever, reheat it, bring it up to temp and use it. So like if you're doing a bunch of them or like you wanna make the cake ahead of time, like you can make the cake, keep it in the freezer forever. You can make this, keep it in the fridge and then just do it like, pretty much before you serve it. Um, you do want to put this back in the fridge to defrost, clearly, and set, because the gelatin and chocolate will end up setting. But um, putting it back in the freezer, it's also like you're not going to wrap it. So like you don't want to touch this once it gets set. So that's my thoughts on that. Anyone else? People? Questions? Oh, let's 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 look at this let's look at this ombre. 
Mm, mm. Do we have some, we don't have some hot water, do we? Oh, but you know what we do have? Also, by the way, um, these cook this cooktop's super intuitive, <laughs> too, <laughs> because uh, it's funny. You do these demos, and it's always like a different kitchen and whatever, and like the one thing I always forget to do is like check the appliances. So like sometimes you come in, and like it's a completely weird setup, and like you get in the middle of your demo, and you're like, uh, <laughs> hmm, I don't know how to turn this on. But um, I figured it out in four seconds, and I was like, thank gosh. Because like some of these like technology is great, but sometimes you're like, um, can I just hit on? Like how do I? Like there's like programs for this, like temperature control and like sous vide, and I'm like, but I just want heat. Um, cool. Um, wait, can we get a camera on this? By the way, you can see it's already bubbling, and these were cold bottles of Avian that I just put in. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, try doing that with gas. Suckers. I give you that. Questions while we're waiting for water to boil? <laughs> I these the uh, the cake layers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the question is for the mirror glaze, is the frosting frozen? Yeah, you want to make sure it's frozen, like frozen, frozen, um, because you're pouring the warm glaze on, and it will, if it's not frozen, it will uh, melt into it. But I mean, this, you saw, like, I assembled this and then threw it in there for like 10 minutes. It's better if it's in there for like, you know, four hours. Who's calling me? Is anyone in this room calling? Mary, are you calling me? Anyone calling me? No? Okay. Cool. All right. Oh, by the way, that's boiling. <laughs> Casual. Yeah, right? I made a joke before that everyone's getting a monogram kitchen. Look under your seats. You get an easy bake monogram kitchen, and you get an easy bake monogram It's easy bake, guys. Don't get, don't get too excited. It's just a little one. And see, I can pour hot water on it, and it doesn't freak out. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to do this and then turn it. Sorry, guys. So yeah, cake cutting, by the way. Hot, hot knife, hot water. Oh, she's so pretty. Look at her. Do we have an actual plate? Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, good. Whoop. Eh, I'll just sacrifice it. It's fine. So, you guys can see the inside. And again, I just did it by eye, right? If you start dark and work light, it's good. More questions? If you're doing it like nude, you mean? Ah, um, yeah, because the, the edges get, get brown. Um, so the best way to do it is either you can bake them on sheets, which is wasteful, or you can buy a, a ring cutter or a ring that's like um, an inch smaller than the cake pan. So if you're baking an eight-inch cake, get a seven-inch ring, cut it, and then you'll have, the, you'll have that same thing. And that's like for the naked cakes, too. Like, you cut it, and then you can wrap it in acetate or even parchment as you build it, and then take it off, and then you'll just have a naked cake layer. Naked cakes. More questions? Comments? 
Oh, yeah. Oh, so yesterday uh, um, for the James Beard luncheon, we did um, kind of, I'm not going to say signature desserts. It was the dessert that got me my first job at, at Butter. And actually, the, the, rest, the recipes are in your packets if you want to make them, but it was like a molten carrot cake. So like just a no-nonsense carrot cake because I don't like, I'm a purist, clearly. I'm very understated. I don't like, uh, but I don't like stuff in my carrot cake. Like, I like it to be carrots. I don't like walnuts or pineapple or whatever. So it's just straight up carrot and then filled with a cream cheese frosting. And then you, you like reheat it and it's like gooey and stuff. And then if you want the pineapple or the coconut or the nuts or whatever, like use them as garnish, but don't put it in my cake, okay? I have very strong feelings on carrot cake, clearly. Kemas. We have three more minutes. Okay, great. Oh. So, yes, so the glaze was sugar, water, sweetened condensed milk in a pot, powdered gelatin with a little bit of water to hydrate it, boil, add the gelatin to the water, dump that all over the white chocolate, Make sure that's nice and mixed. I pass it through a strainer just in case there's any clumps because you don't want it to clump going down. Um, and that's it. All right. Thank you guys for coming. Enjoy the rest of food and wine, by the way. Um, there's a lot of great demos coming up. There's so much good food and wine.